So today we're going to look at construction detailing uh, and we're going to look at it in terms of standardized construction systems and creating wall sections. When we're creating wall sections, what we're really wanting to do is to create a full section through a wall from the relationship of how a house in this case or a residential construction system meets the ground. So a foundation to footing, footing to floor, floor to wall, wall to window or door opening, wall to ceiling or roof junction. That's the wall section, it includes all those aspects. So let's get started. Where do we start? When we're talking about timber frame construction, we're generally starting with a piece of timber. Now I've drawn this as a fill and lines and just so you understand exactly what I'm doing, I'll delete the whole thing and start again. So I'm gonna get a fill, I'm just in Archicad using Archicad layer, I'm using a 25% fill and I'm using one that's a bit brown looking uh, just because I find colors really help to differentiate between elements when we're doing construction detailing. So that's not necessarily an industry standard but it's more of a, a graphic way to help explain what I'm doing. I'm going to use uh, standard framing sizes and so the framing sizes that I'm going to use is 90 by 45. So most of the timber that you'll see me using is 90 by 45 and I'll let you know if I change that. So to draw a, a box, simply put, uh, I'm gonna move to the right first, type in 90. I'm using the rotated rectangular method which basically means I draw one way and then I draw parallel to that and then I'll type in 45. So that draws the box. So that means it gives me the fill and the outline all in one go. And the method that I'm using allows me to see a thickness. So when I'm using CAD, I don't like using colors to explain line thicknesses. We don't need to do that because we have the ability to show true line weight. Instead, I want the drawing to show me what I would wanna see when I'm printing it out. So the more I zoom in, we see the thicker that line gets and I can change that line thickness as well. So I can make that very, very thick if I wanted to. But for a piece of timber, uh, that's probably about as thick as I want to get. Now, when I'm drawing a piece of timber, I either need to show a fill or a hatch inside that's showing that it's dressed, or I show a cross through it. And when I'm showing a cross through it, that's representing that it's not dressed timber. So it's maybe structural, maybe non-structural, that's not necessarily what it's about, but it's not presentation, it's not exposed and um, dressed timber. It's not supposed to look pretty necessarily, that would be a way of describing it. Again, it could explain other things, we could be trying to explain hardwood or softwood by the type of grain structure that we show, uh, that's not necessarily the case, although generally, nowadays at least, Anything hardwood is going to be dressed. Anything that's softwood, maybe not as much. Here we go, so there's our first piece of timber. Now we call this in the construction understanding a bottom plate. Um, and then we're going to copy this up and the piece of timber that's going to extend up further to create our wall frame we're gonna call that our stud. Now to differentiate between these, I'm gonna take this fill and make it a bit darker. So I'm gonna make this one 50% and 25%. And what we're showing here is that we're cutting through this piece of timber called the bottom plate, whereas the stud vertically, the vertical member is in elevation only. And so I'll give that a thinner outline because we're not cutting through it. I could make it completely thin if I wanted to. And then we have something else that goes between our studs because our studs are spaced every 600 millimeters or 450. And so we'll also have insulation that sits in between here. So I'm gonna go into my library and I'm gonna search for insul. And that's going to find my fiber insulation. I'll just place that here. And this is representative of bat insulation. And so we're probably talking, when we're talking about um, insulation in a timber frame wall, we're talking about um, a uh, insulation bat made of wool, potentially, although it's pretty uncommon. Uh, it could be polyester, which is maybe more common. It could be earth 
wool, which is basically recycled content made out of fiberglass, or it could be a fiberglass bat. The other option is rock wool. Rock wool is very useful as well because it's very dense and it um, is fire resistant. So we're going to move this into place and we see that it's a little bit too dominant. We can't see through it. So we're going to turn off the background fill. We'll make that empty or transparent would be another way of saying that. I want the pen line to be quite thin. I could also just turn off the fill if I didn't want to have any fill. Press OK and now we can see through it, but it's too big. So all I'm going to do is to grab this edge and by grabbing this edge I can make it shorter and I can grab this edge and make it narrower. The only problem is it's working the wrong way around. So I'll just drag this across and now I can reduce it. So we're building it up bit by bit and my intention with this is to explain standard construction practices as well. So I'm sort of started in the wrong place because realistically what we need to do is to connect this to our ground. So what is our ground? We're talking about earth. So let's draw some earth. Maybe we'll give it a creamy background. This is our dirt. Our foundation means the ground that we're connecting into. Um, sometimes we get that terminology a little bit confused because in American construction uh, they call their foundations the, uh, the concrete or the stone pillars we call those footings, generally speaking. So we will have foundation, which is dirt or sand, connect our footings into that. So the next thing that we will put in the ground, basically, is concrete. Now, sometimes that concrete will be mass. Sometimes it will be reinforced. I'm going to just draw bits, and then I'll start to explain as I go. And in order for that, footing to be relatively strong. Uh, it might be somewhere around the range of 450 millimeters deep. Let's do that again. And maybe something like 300 millimeters wide. And our footing is the relationship between our framing and our ground. But that's not normally how we'll do it. So normally the footing will sit in the ground. And at the moment, I'm going to work on the idea that we're creating a raft slab or a slab on ground. In that case, what's happening is our slab and our footing get connected together. So we're going to add a slab that's at least 100 millimeters thick to our footing. And so, very symbolically, we've now got a footing with a slab. We saw that I didn't add the slab on top of the footing. They're actually engaged. Now, is that true? Is that accurate? Still not quite. So we have a footing, but generally we need the footing to sit on something strong and stable. And often the dirt of ground isn't stable enough. And so what we'll often have is a pier, which extends further down into the ground. So I'm going to use a dashed line and I'll make this quite fat and that's going to extend further down into the ground and the reason why we're not cutting through the pier but we're just seeing it in elevation this time is because it's like a column so it only happens every now and then it doesn't happen all the time and so if we were cutting through a generic section we only want to cut through the earth and we see the pier in elevation. We don't want to see that pier constantly. What I'm going to do here is stretch this straight line to turn it into an arc. I'm going to mirror a copy of it. And then I'm going to mirror a copy of it again. And so this little shape that we see here, sort of a little bit like an infinity shape, 
is basically just telling us uh, that the P goes down further than what we've shown it, but we don't need to necessarily show how far down it goes because we don't know. When we're drawing, we generally don't know how far down that pier will need to go. Ideally, we want that pier to go down to bedrock, uh, stone or, or shale or something that's strong enough to be able to support the whole building's weight. And generally, again, we don't know that until we start building, we start drilling. And so for now, that's representative enough. And then of course, I won't be the one, ideally, who makes the decision about how, how far down that pier goes anyway. I'm going to leave the depth and requirements to a structural engineer to determine. Now the BCA does allow a building designer or an architect to be able to specify these under normal circumstances in particular situations. But generally I would always recommend uh, that we uh, leave that to professionals if we're not exactly sure what to do. Now is this correct? Starting to get correct, but we're still missing some information. What are we missing? It's very hard to get that earth to be perfectly smooth and flat. So one of the things that we'll do is put a layer of sand underneath our slab. So let's make this pen a little bit thicker. And I'm going to have 50 millimeters of sand underneath my slab. I might also want to have another 50 millimeters below that of gravel. And I'll make that pen a bit thinner. And now it's starting to look a little bit more like what we could expect. But there's another couple problems. We also can't expect that when we dig a hole in the ground, it's going to be perfectly smooth and flush like this. Now that's our intention, but it's rarely ever the case. And what we often might want to do and need to do is have a bit of a, a thickening of the edge of the connection between the footing and the slab, because otherwise this point here becomes very weak. So what we're going to do is to take both of these, get our ax, split them, 45 degrees, cut those away. And we're going to add plus this triangle into the section of concrete. So we're making this a little bit thicker, a little bit wider and more supportive. And this is relatively common for what our slab will look like. We're almost there, but we're just missing one detail. When we pour concrete, it's liquid and it cures over time. So what we're going to need to do is have a membrane, a plastic layer, which sits between the earth and our slab. So I'm going to represent this with a, a very thick pen. And I want this to run the whole way around the relationship between my slab. Now we see that the slab is ending over here and that looks a little bit strange. What I'm trying to do is say, I don't care about the whole building at the moment. I'm not trying to show the whole building at the moment. All I want to show is just the relationship here. And I'm happy to hide everything else. So what I'm going to do here is use this, send backwards slightly. So now all of those extra bits are being hidden by this big white fill. Now that's a graphic way of doing it, it's not necessarily the best technical way of doing it. Ideally what we might want is something called a break line. A break line is a more technical way of explaining what I'm trying to do and what that often looks like is a symbolic line like this. And let's bring that to the front. Now we could use a symbol or we could create the line ourselves, but basically it's sign is basically the same as everything on the left hand side of this break line. So we're not really showing it because it's the same. We don't need to waste our time doing that. Now, of course, if we went far enough to the right, some other things would be happening. Uh, but for now, all we're trying to do is just show this relationship between here.
Now, this is pretty much accurate for a concrete slab on ground or a raft slab. What am I missing? I'm missing steel. So I could represent that in a few different ways. I could create a dashed line here that's representing reinforcing. And this type of reinforcing uh, represented with a dash line is probably going to be a grid of mesh. Let's make that a little bit longer and make that a little bit about that. But we will also have larger pieces of steel sometimes, which are bars. And so to represent those bars, we might want to use a circle and let's fill that now with a black solid fill. And now once I've drawn the fill, I don't need the circle anymore. So I'll delete that and I can move this fill over here. Again, all I'm trying to do is just be symbolic. And what we'd normally call this is trench mesh. And this will often effectively form a cage. And what that's doing is using wire or steel to tie bigger steel members together, rods together. And this is creating what we call reinforced concrete. So thousands of years ago, uh, the, the Greeks and the Romans were figuring this out, that concrete has amazing compression strength, whereas steel has amazing tension strength. And when we put the two together, we get a very, very strong material. And so when we need something that's very strong, reinforced concrete is a very good way of doing that. And we use a lot of reinforced concrete for construction in Australia particularly for slabs and for more high-rise buildings as well. Now this is our concrete slab on ground, raft slab. We're doing this to engineer's detail, so we don't want to tell the engineer what to do. They're going to help explain that in more detail. We've got our pier sitting underneath. And then we can get our carpenter to build our timber frame on top of here. Now there's a few things we want to think about. Do we want the timber frame to sit directly on top of the concrete slab? Do we want to see a con uh, concrete slab edge? Uh, we'll talk about all of these later and we'll get into the nitty gritty of other elements that will sit underneath this timber, uh, just like we did with all the extras. But in general terms, we're now starting to get the frame structure. In a timber frame building, whether this is going to be timber frame and clad, or whether this is going to be brick veneer, we will be using this type of timber frame as the primary structural element. Thank you for liking this tutorial. Please subscribe and click the bell to hear about new tutorials.